Oh, g'day there. You're probably uh, here because you're curious about making changing spark plugs on the Tenere 700 a little bit easier. I'm halfway through the job. I thought I would do a video anyway. There is at least one other video I've seen online uh, showing how to get the plugs out once you've done the mod. It didn't actually show the result of doing the mod, so I'll show you guys that real quick. Probably the first thing you're going to want to do before you start doing this is make sure you've got some replacement plugs if you want to change them out. Um, you can just do the mod before the plugs are due for replacement uh, to make it easier to get to next time or if you happen to drown the bike and need to dewater it for whatever reason. Uh, it's good to get that mod done straight away. My bike's got 10,000 Ks on it so I'm putting some Iridium plugs in it anyway whilst I've got it all apart. Uh, the stock plugs that I have here are uh, part numbers LMAR8A-9. If you're interested, the Iridium replacements uh, LMAR8BI-9. I've already gapped them. Uh, they're about 0.85 millimeters, ready to go. So basically, getting to this point requires removing the seat, the side shrouds and the two plastic panels on each side. Basically, I would recommend removing these two as one piece because they're joined together by uh, this bolt and nut here, but when you get it, the, there's so much thread lock on that bolt that when you try and undo it on that side, it just, it'll spin that square bolt out from its plastic housing and break it. Um, I've actually fixed that by using a large washer on there instead. But, you know, you can just leave it as one piece. Um, easier to do. You have to remove both of them anyway to, to do the mod. So once you've got the seat, side shrouds, these side bits off. Uh, then you want to go ahead and take the tank off. You've got some bolts at the back here to take the tank off. You also have a couple of push pins at the front. Don't forget to remove those. And then you've got your fuel connector, your know, fuel pump connector, and also your breather. Uh, when you go to take your fuel connector off, um, I had a little bit of trouble with it, but once you figure out how to do it, it's pretty easy. Um, when it's installed, it's clicked in there. You just have to back that. You know how to do it with one hand, but pull that off. And then you've got to squeeze the sides here. There's a couple of little soft buttony things on the side there, and you better pull that off. So once you've got all that off, uh, tank off and everything, the actual mod involves removing this piece of plastic from the frame. Uh, it's just bolted in with two 10 mil bolts. One is in behind here, the other one's right there. There, are, there will be a whole bunch of wires plugged into these holes. Um, just clip there. I think the main purpose of this is just to support those wires. So what we're doing is removing this, unclip all the wires from it, get rid of it, put it aside, and then we need to zip tie up the wires. So basically I've got one zip tie here, just holding these ones up and out the way. One here that's going around all that big bunch of wires there and, and just around one of those brake lines as well. So it's pretty basic. And then I've also put one at the back here. And they don't seem to be rubbing on anything and I, you know, Plenty of guys are doing this mode and not having any dramas, so yeah, those wires are pretty right. And what this um, actually does is opens up the whole side here, so you can get straight in there and you can actually get to both both plugs from this side. So apparently you can do it with the tank still on. Once you've done this mod, um, you can get in there, but the tank sort of, as you know, comes down like this and it does sort of give you a lot less space to swing a ratchet down to get those plugs undone so i think if you're at home doing a spark plug change it's easier to just get the tank off and do it this way anyway um, previously the service manual says you should remove or loosen all this stuff off and get it out the way so you can access all that stuff but um this way is basic seat tank side fairings and you're in so it's definitely a lot less involved what you want to do once you've got all this stuff out of the way, obviously unplug the wiring from the each coil pack. There's two of those. And if I'm going to be honest, the hardest part of the whole job is getting those coil packs out of there. 
from here. It's, it's not easy. It took me a while. What you've got to remember, you, you want to try and spin it or twist it back and forth, but twisting the top part. Yeah, let me try and demonstrate here. If you can see, if you're just twisting the top part, you're not actually turning this part. You want this, this rubber seal part to spin. So you've got to try and grip it like that and twist the whole lot so that that comes out, if you know what I mean. If you're just spinning this top bit, it's not going to go anywhere because that, that part there will just be sitting still while you're spinning the inner. And it's highly recommended to lubricate this, put a bit of grease around that before you put it back in. Make it a lot easier to get out next time. Other than that, the only other trouble I had was the left left side uh, spark plug or coil. It really only just fits out of there. Um, you have to push the throttle cable a little bit to the left as you're pulling this up. And there's also some wiring above it that you have to push back. And you sort of got to pull this thing up to the front of the bike and in this direction. And it will only just fit out. Um, but it is doable, you'll get there. Um, once you've done it once, I think it's, it's going to be a lot easier. Uh, and from there, getting the plugs themselves out is actually quite easy. I'm using the same tool set up as what I saw recommended in another video. Um, so we've got a 14mm spark plug socket and two universal joints along with a, a 3 8 inch drive ratchet. And that worked really well. You can, you can get that in there quite easily. This socket doesn't have a rubber plug in it, so the plugs are just sitting loose in, in the top of the head. Um, I actually just used a magnet, a long thingy, bent that down in there and, and that, that got the plugs out, which is great at home, but I don't carry a magnet with me out on the bike, so if I need to dewater it, I need to figure out another way of getting those out. And plus I don't carry this tool with me, or all that. I could if I had to, but what I'm going to try and do when I put it all back together is use, well this is my basic toolkit that I carry on the bike, what I'm interested in is the stock KDM plug driver that comes with, uh, I think these come with your KDM EXCs, I think we got one with our uh, 500 EXC and our 350s, so yeah, that's a 14mm. Just as a point of interest, fits perfectly in the front axle of the T7 <laughs> to undo that, which is very handy. I think there was something on the end of this that came off, but uh, that works quite well because you can actually just use an 8mm socket on there. 8mm socket. We have a driver and it's also flexible, so it should be able to get in there. I haven't tried it yet, but um, it is pretty much around about the same length. Should work, so I won't have to, well, if this works, I won't have to add any more tools to my kit. It'll just be uh, stuff that I've already got, so. That'll be awesome. This plug driver does have a rubber insert in there to grab the plugs, but it doesn't actually work with these. I think it's designed to grab the, the ones that have the screw caps on there, so it's a bit too big, but that's okay. I'll, I'll muck around with that. I'll find a rubber plug to go in there that will actually grip onto this plug, so I'll be able to get it out without a magnet, hopefully. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the plugs back in now and um, see how I go getting those coil packs back in. I think that's gonna be the hardest part again. Um, getting them back in there, well, the left hand one anyway. So I'll try and film it as best I can, but there's no guarantees that it's gonna be any good. Probably also worth noting that um, I haven't had to remove these awesome SRC Adventure Moto crash bars to do any of this. You can get, get all the way in there without touching the crash bars, so that's awesome. So I'm going to do the sensible thing and do the hard one first. I'm just going to lower the plug in there. My fingers, hopefully not drop it too far because you don't want it to um, close up the little gap on the end of it too much. I'm going to try my KDM tool. Yeah, don't get me wrong guys, it's a tight fit in here. I don't have tiny little hands, but I don't have big meaty banana hands either. So you can probably see there's a really long shank on these 
so they take quite a while to thread in but thankfully they, um, they go in pretty easily with your fingers sounds like it's gotten tight I'll see if I can get this on there well looks like this tool's going to be a goer bloody beautiful I don't know if it's worth noting or not, but the plugs weren't that tight when I undid them, stock ones. Now I can't really get a massive swing on this anyway, but I'll do them up as tight as I can. So yeah, guys, that tool, that tool's a winner. If you can get, get hold of one of these from somewhere, they're very lightweight compact um, does the job All right, put the second plug in lower it down gently certainly seem to have no problem finding their threads so that's good probably like a lot of you guys I was a bit worried about um, doing the spark plug change on the T7 especially after watching Clubby and the other fella having to rip a lot of stuff out the way um, but this this definitely makes the job a lot easier. You can see, you can imagine if the fuel tank is here, you're not going to have much room at all for swinging a ratchet. So, as I said, if you drown your bike and you just want to try and uh, minimise the amount of shit you got to do to get the plugs out, you might want to try and do it with the tank on there. But it's really not that hard to get the tank off, or at least even just you can just spin the thing around. You don't have to undo all the, all the shit underneath it. Okay. I think we're done. Now the fun begins, the coil packs. Do not forget to grease. I have heard it mentioned that dielectric grease is the stuff to use for this job, but... Uh, I ain't going to buy some special grease just for something that I'll probably never use again, so a bit of uh, standard waterproof grease will do just fine. I'll even smear a bit around inside the plug port. Just trust me, these things are friggin' hard, they're tight to get out. Now apparently there's a knack to getting this in, you've got to fold the tip down like that get it started. Sorry if you guys can't see anything there. As I said this is a really tight fit. But it came out of there so it will go back in. Alright um, guys I just had to stop the video and have a bit of a think about what I was doing because what I was doing wasn't working. If you find that you're forcing this coil pack in, you need to, what you actually need to do is rather than pushing the wiring back with it, you need to bring that wiring out of the way, if you know what I mean. There's your wiring up there. Rather than trying to push the coil pack down like that, you need to get the wiring over this side and get the coil pack underneath it and then it's pretty hard to explain, but once you're in there, you'll know what I mean. Um, if you do it that way, it'll go straight in, no worries at all. So just need to push it down into location. Make sure she's nice and snug. You can feel it clipping down into place. Just gonna wipe off a bit of that excess grease. Reconnect the wiring to the coil. On that side, and that's one side done. No worries. Okay, greasing up the second coil pack. This one should be a piece of cake. Ok, 
Okay, wiring back on. And uh, quite done. Still got all the skin on my knuckles, so that's a win. All right, so I'm just gonna throw the tank back on now. Okay, so now that I have the tank on, hooked up and bolted in, um, I'm gonna just make sure it's gonna start and run fine. Better to find out this stuff before you get everything back together. I'll give the pump a couple of primes. There you go, that's something. Um, you can see here uh, the limited space with the tank on. Like you can still get your hand in there. Um, yeah, you, you could probably still do it. I'll definitely be trying that if, uh, if I need to on the trail at some point. But uh, as I said, when I'm at home and I've got the time and the tools and everything to do it properly, I'll just be taking the side fairings off, taking the tank off and just, you know, you can get in there easy. Alrighty, my baby's back together, finally. Uh, that's a good feeling. Even better to know that it still runs. If there's anything that we can take away from this experience, and there's always a few things, uh, if you think that this might be something that you could handle at home yourself, definitely give it a go. Uh, it's not that hard. It just takes a bit of perseverance, especially getting those coil packs out for the first time. But once you've, you've done that, you're laughing. Second thing is, if you can get a hold of one of these from a KDM, definitely a handy little tool to have. Works great for getting the T7 plugs out. Um, and thirdly, if you happen to ride through water a lot, be very careful about dropping your bike in there because as easy as that is, it's probably not something you want to be trying to do on the side of a trail when it's starting to get dark and you're a long way from camp. <laughs> it's doable, but... Um, Definitely easier with that mod, worth doing for sure, but um, yeah, try and avoid drowning your bike. <laughs> um, if you guys haven't subscribed to our main channel, make sure you check it out. There's a link in the description, MVDBR Enduro. We put out weekly vids, uh, heaps of T7 content on there. Definitely check that out, and um, we'll see you guys on the next vid. Thanks for watching. Cheers.